So I've been looking at my modeling cabinet for a while of my finished builds and I'm noticing a few, well really a couple of models that still need a little bit of looking to before I can really call them done. I do have a rule about putting unfinished things in the cabinet but sometimes they get broken. Uh, but for this episode we're going to be taking a look at the first pilot enterprise. And um, I fished out a custom base for this, and I'm going to be painting up the base to look like Planet Talos 4. So, hopefully, be able, this episode will be able to offer something a little different than the usual model build video and concentrate a little more on some airbrush art. And um, the great thing about these dome bases is they're, they're perfect for this kind of thing, and um, I didn't want to have it just sitting by itself. So, I fished out, you know, one of my wooden bases here and I think while I'm at it I may add a little bit of weathering to the model as well because uh, not many people really know I guess that the first pilot enterprise did have a little bit of weathering on it at least and uh, before being repainted completely when an internal lighting system was added for the second pilot and uh, no weathering was added for the second one, but the first pilot definitely had weathering and we're going to try and replicate that and then do all the clear coats and the rest of it. So, so far I've got the base primed lightly with some Tamiya primer and now we're going to start putting on our first colour. Alright, I'm just going to do some quick handheld stuff before I lock the camera down and hope you, hopefully show you some airbrushing, but I've got some, got my setup here, and uh, it's got some paints that I'm likely going to be using. Uh, I bought this metallic blue for the Robbie the Robot model, which I haven't painted yet, but I thought it would give some interesting relief. Uh, the tans are obviously for the lighter parts of the planet and some of the darker colors for the land masses and I've also got some of this uh, brown sort of color for some of the weathering on the Enterprise itself uh, speaking of which here she is a little nerve-wracking um, kind of weathering this well after it's been completed really I think I painted this and Oh god, when was it? 2012 or something like that. Um, yeah, she's uh I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking it might be kind of cool to do some some quick airbrushing. Uh, and yes, the wood base will be varnish when it's all said and done. So um, I think we should uh, just dive right in. Cool, and I think we'll leave it with that. Nice and subtle. Just using it really as a rough guide, and I hope that's actually in focus for you. Yeah, it's only really just a rough guide. I, you know, I'll use it as a basic template, um, but I'll probably likely, you know, sort of go my own way with it. Really, just starting with the brown, just to sort of. Uh, 
block some of the colours in, but also to back some of the the yellows um, with a little bit of darkness. Because I don't know if you can see there or not. There's a little bit of you know, there's obviously a lot of yellow and tan and white, but it's sort of bordered when the you get to the land masses of you know all the rock and stuff. So I sort of want to give myself a good base before I start with the lighter colour because I'm going to go with the darker colour last. And cool trivia effect, Talos 4 is actually the moon. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with the desert sort of look of the planet base now and I'm sort of just going to put some cloud coverage on and this is sort of, I don't know, I just, I hope it doesn't ruin it, honestly, it's, uh, I mean, it's not the best thing, but, um, but it's the first time I've done this, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, so yeah, let's get some uh, clouds on and we'll call it done, sand gloss coat. And I think they will call that done. I'm pretty happy with it. Looks, uh, you know, as I thought, as these things always happen, I sort of start with a reference and a base, and I sort of end up with my own thing. And I, uh, you know what, I really like it. Turned out better than I hoped it would. So, uh, what's next now is I'm going to put a gloss coat on this, most likely. Although maybe not, because it is kind of a dead planet, so a flat coat is kind of fitting. Uh, and then after that, I'll be sealing, well, depending on what I do with this base, whether it's uh, whether I just flat coat it or not, uh, I'll be clear coating my Enterprise and putting on a last, you know, a couple of last minute decals to finish, and then it will be done. So we'll uh, come back with the final, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Can you understand me? It appears, Magistrate, that the intelligence of the specimen is shockingly limited. This is no surprise, since his vessel was baited here so easily with a simulated message. As you can read in its thoughts, it is only now beginning to suspect that the survivors of encampment were a simple illusion we placed in their minds. You're not speaking, yet I can hear you. You will note the confusion as it leads our thought transmissions. Well, welcome to the last part. Uh... I really did my best on the um, 
the base to make it look as much like a planet as possible. Uh, the, the airbrush that I was using was the Neo, and it's it's kind of a it's an entry level brush, uh, kind of more suitable for moderate users and uh, not really geared toward the airbrush side of things the airbrush out side of things rather uh, and neither are the paints that I was using which are as always are the Tamiya acrylics um, but I'm pretty happy with what I got so far anyway I just thinned the paint down enough and gotten close enough with the airbrush with the end cap off just like I usually do I even do the weathering streaks for weathering the, the same um, I had tons of fun doing the base. I really did. I had so much fun that I actually whipped out my Reliant kit and did a Mutara Nebula a bit of airbrush art on that base as well and um, sort of scraping my brain to find what else I can do on uh, for the rest of my kits for the round two bases. So I, uh, I had heaps of fun and uh, I'm really happy with the result. And so I, you know, I hope you enjoyed watching that process, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do a little more in the future. So the the base underneath the the dome is just a varnished piece of wood. Uh, it's one of my last pieces. Hopefully the caretaker here can maybe supply me with some more. Uh, they're really lovely. I really can't find them in the store, so you guys in the states are lucky. Uh, the grey colour of, and I realise I haven't done an actual build video on Captain Pike's Enterprise before because this is, I think I built this years ago and I've only just really finished it now, but just from memory, the grey on the hull is, I think, just a custom mix of Tamiya white and black. Uh, I think that's all it is. I don't think I put any kicker colours in there for blues or greens. I really just mixed it to match what I can sort of see in the famous rollout photo as being an accurate colour. Because for the pilot, they used an automotive paint that was just a concrete grey. And when they repainted the model again, a, a third time for the, the production version, they used a slight green colour, I think. According to Gary Kerr, anyway, who's been heavily involved with the restoration of the 11-foot filming model. Um, now, the weather I've put on this is, I hope, not that controversial anymore, because I think it's fairly well documented now that the first pilot did have some weathering on it. Um, it was an 11-foot long model, uh, that likely had weathering on it just by looking at the opening shot from the cage. Uh, I don't think that's lights, I think it's actually weathering. Uh, and back in 1964, in February, I think when the effects shots were done, the model, the 11 footer, didn't have a lighting system in it. So it was just a big ass piece of wood and metal. And then uh, for the second pilot, I filmed later that year. Uh, they did an internal lighting system for the model and it was repainted and I'm pretty sure there was no weathering on it. I think I've mentioned this before and you know and the rest is sort of history it's a little more well documented. Um, speaking of the 11 footer and the condition it was in December, January of 64-65 um, there are a couple of details on the polar lights kit which I removed so that it would be more accurate to the 11 footer because I think a lot of people don't realize the polar lights first pilot version that you can build is actually accurate to the three foot study model and that includes details like the uh, sort of clip like detail on the nacelle end caps which I totally removed because on the 11 footer they were just completely smooth um, I guess it wasn't designed to be shot from the back because it was only featured in one shot which is interesting considering the amount of money that was spent on that model uh, every other shot was of the 3 footer so I decided to try and replicate the 11 footer as much as possible 
Um, I also removed the landing gear details on the bottom of the saucer, the, the, the triangle sections, and there's also some sort of nipple details on the planetary sensor dome. And uh, what else? And on the forks on the sides of the deflector dish, they're completely smooth now, which is again accurate to the 11 footer. And last but not least, probably the blue neck, or the blue dorsal which I left glossy because in a couple of uh, un officially I think unpublished rollout photos that, that it shows a metallic blue neck that looks has, a, has more of a sheen than the rest of the ship so I flat coated everything except for the dorsal and the beside collectors and uh, yeah pretty happy with it um, always had a huge fascination with the cage even as a kid, I think I saw it in black and white, and it was just fascinating to me that all the characters were different, the Enterprise looked different, it was a different feel, and it gave you a feeling of, you know, there are a lot more adventures than what you saw on TV with Kirk and the rest of the crew, and uh, just always had a big fascination, and I always loved the, the larger dish and the, you know, the the uh, the points on the, on the cells, and, uh, because I liked it so much, I wanted to really make a display of it. I did toy with the idea of getting a cage error mission patch off eBay or something like that to put on the base too, but I thought... I even asked my fiancé about it, and I think she agreed that it would be a little too busy. I, this looks a little classier to me, and I think I might keep it this way. So the dome has been hot glued down to the base. Uh, it's not earthquake proof really but it's it's good enough to sit in my cabinet and that's pretty much it um, I might do a quick video uh, showing what I've done with my Reliant with the Matara Nebula display base but I think that'll probably do it we don't want this video to be too long because it's really just a simple one uh, thanks for watching <laughs>